everybody, it's Tyler here at Allentown FMA, checking in with 1807 Redbird Robotics, last year winning Seneca and coming in looking phenomenal this year as well too. Take a look at 1807, what they have to offer, a lot of great packaging integration, dual-sided intake we'll be talking about as we follow that note journey all the way through. I really love uh, how their indexing mechanism is, so we'll break that down a bit more. Going into this uh, dual amp and shooter score as well, there's a lot of really cool things that software will be breaking down as well. So let's talk more about this team coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Tucker, let's start off on your robot. You have an awesome uh, dual-sided uh, intaking, um, two completely different systems that still work together, and then you got a really cool centering mechanism. So let's break that down and how it works. Yep, okay, so for our collection, we decided to go with a dual collection under the bumpers. We decided it would give us a lot of uh, defense capabilities as well as uh, speed and maneuverability. Uh, we decided to go for two collectors because it would let us um, have very straight paths in our autos and cycles. Uh, for both sides, we used rollers and compliant wheels to get an optimal half inch of compression on the note. Um, and on this side, on the front side of the robot, we used a mechanism we call the centralizer. The centralizer works using a set of rollers on each side that pushes the note in towards the center with the help of a set of omni wheels over top. Th this allows us to collect uh, notes from pretty much wherever um, they hit along the front of our robot with without having to worry about centering it once it's inside the robot. So touch it on it. So the thing I'll ask you is, uh, what is the uh, reason that you had that just on the front of your robot and not on both sides? Is that like an autonomous thing or is it a future plan thing? What's that look like? Uh, unfortunately, we ran out of uh, weight on our weight limit. Um, so we weren't able to attach the back one, but we are working on shaving down weight to have that on for the next competition. So, so what part are we lopping off your robot to get that on? Uh, we're mostly focusing on doing a lot of pocketing of these supports here. Uh, we've determined that they're not entirely, like all, like because we, we have a lot of uh, eighth inch um, that stock that we figured that we could um, pocket and take a lot of material out of, as well as um, bolt heads and small things like that. Yeah. Tia, uh, this indexing system you have is really slick. I know we'll show a note coming in just a little bit, but break down this indexer for me, how it works, and then uh, I'd love to just hear about how did you get the packaging right on it, because that's you know, sure. it's always a difficult thing to do. Sure, sure. So again, as you can see, we've got a dual collection system, and to take advantage of that, we had to also incorporate a dual indexing system that meets at a singular point. So walking around, any path that the note takes, whether through this collection or this collection, it follows through the indexing system with rollers right here and on this side, and it meets at this singular point right here where it has the just amount of compression to get fed into our shooter where it gets stored for you know shooting or doing it in the amp. And so our indexing system allows us to collect from either side and efficiently gets it to the singular point so that we can rely on getting it up to the shooter at any point in the match. And something else that's really cool about our indexing system is that we can index from any point in our shooter. So if we can demonstrate, I'd like to get a note. So at this angle, we can collect. And it slides right in and gets stored right here at this angle. Now, if you want to do the amp and just spit it out real quick. Now, if you want to keep it at the amp angle, we can also collect it. And we'll demonstrate the other side. Yep, that is our second collection. And so following now this route, and now it's up through there and it's ready for either shooting in the speaker, which we can go back down, or in the amp. So when you have this uh, dual collection system, it, from an indexing wise, when you were looking at analyzing this game, uh, what made you think like, hey, like we want those to really kind of be two completely separate, like versus having maybe an, a fully integrated indexing system or something sure, like that? Sure, sure. Well, when we designed our robot, we were obviously limited on space because you can see how compact it is and trying to fit all of the mechanisms in one. It was really easy for us to get everything really low because we wanted the low center of gravity. And so incorporating two different indexing systems was easier for us to incorporate in order to get the note into one singular point. I think we prioritize that. 
um, just to make sure that the path it follows is the shortest, quickest, and obviously the simplest, most robust, and reliable path that we could take. Yeah, and, and it's obviously been working out very well. The control that you all have on the field with the notes has been very impressive so far, so congratulations on a great design uh, for that as well, too. Uh, let's talk about that amp scoring uh, mechanism and how the shooter works as well, too. you got a great integration uh, with that. So, Jacob, talk to me more about uh, you know the packaging in that, what's what it's all comprised of, and then we'll uh, demonstrate that amp scoring one more time, too. Yes, we'll start with the amp mechanism. So the flywheel spin in opposite direction to turn the game piece down here. And with our amp mechanism, we have positive contact of the game piece until the, the game piece is well into the amp, if you want to run it. Yeah, and that just ensures it's not flying around, or even if we get hit by another robot, it will go into the amp. So it's reliability we prioritized. With our shooter flywheels, uh, through a lot of prototyping, we decided to go with two different diameter uh, flywheels. This one is three inches, this is 2.75 inch. And that gives us spin on the game piece uh, and a lot easier way than having a split axle for spinning these two independently. And that just helps to get more straight in a straight line shot. So some of the teams that we've talked to have gone more that kit bot route where they're just having the two wheels on one side. Uh, what made you uh, like decide, hey, having the four wheels is right for us, but obviously you've done well in regards to still getting some spin on it. What, how did you determine that was the best fit for you? Uh, through a lot of testing, we tried both um, the side uh, shooter wheels, but ultimately having top and bottom, we were to get, able to get the most speed and most reliable straight shot. Well, overall, very, very impressive machine. Some of the other things we gotta talk about is the programming that goes into this robot uh, as well too. So Gavin, let's go into how your targeting works for that. Uh, you know, and just even watching like, when you're scoring amp and stuff like that, obviously seeing a couple of different states in there, right? Where the uh, it's going back to positioning as well too. So break down uh, what you're doing from programming and uh, in regards to targeting as well. Yeah, of course. So first off, talking about Teleop, um, the biggest thing that we uh, have uh, programming wise this year is definitely our vision. We use it not only to align ourselves uh, on our rotation of our robot towards the speaker using the angle offset that the April tag is in relation to our robot. We also are able to use the 3D uh, pose estimation of the April tag to get the diagonal distance from the center of the robot to the speaker. We took a bunch of distances and angles that we knew worked, put those into a table, and we're able to interpolate uh, any angle value that we need based off of any distance we're able to collect on the field. And it's been pretty consistent so far. And when we want to talk about auto, over here, well, we just use Path Planner, like I know many other teams have moved to this year. And it's been very consistent for us. And uh, we've been able to very reliably score these game pieces. Uh, we're, we're able to use not only our aligning, but also our shooter angle adjustment in auto as well to account for any error in the path whatsoever. And in Teleop, the only other thing that's left to talk about really is the biggest thing I wanted to work on this year was control, control, control of the robot. Make it as easy for the driver and operator as possible. So everything that you've seen on the field and here is all in one button. It's all very simple. You never have to do multiple actions at once. Even the amp scoring, as I'll show right now, when I'm holding down the button, it doesn't actually go to the amp angle because our amp angle sits outside the frame perimeter and we're worried about damaging the arm while we're lining up. So since it fits snugly in the hole, we just have it come up to this angle, and then when I let go, it goes down to the correct angle and releases the piece. So that, in combination with our sensors and all that sort of stuff, makes control super easy for us in the field and gets rid of a lot of uh, human error from the equation. Well, 1807, congratulations on a fantastic crescendo robot this year. This looks awesome. There's so much that teams can learn from this, so hopefully uh, they get a chance to see this and uh, be inspired by what this machine is. So good luck here at Allentown, and of course, throughout the rest of the season here in FMA, and hope to see you at the World Championship. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.